Good Friday. How can one describe such a day? The wrongdoing of all humanity putting to an end an innocent man, the Son of God. This is the story of Jesus' death by way of a cross, all in one moment bringing death to the bright light of our future. He never stopped loving us, and yet this is the incredible part of it. Our sin stopped his heart. Our sin drove the nails firmly in the hands of God. All along, these were the plans. We told ourselves that we were in control, and this was deemed sufficient for all of us. The brutal beating, the inhuman flogging, the naked humiliation. Heaven watched and saw it all. Our rebellion, our guilt, our shame, erasing the very notion of reconciling us with God. Our sin and our debt, overcoming Jesus. Here is our king, obliterated. The enemy laughing, his plans unstoppable. There's no longer the sound of freedom rising. Now God's people are utterly broken. Behold the chains of mortality. Yes, this is what is true. We had heard the stories of old. The lost are found, the blind can see, the weak are made strong. But now we are witnesses to this reality. God is dead. We'd almost believed there is a way of redemption. There is a life of fulfillment. There is a peace beyond understanding. Now we know better. For us, we can say that God is encapsulated in this one realization. The single greatest sacrifice in human history is finished. How clearly we can see it. So what's so good about Good Friday? Just one thing, that the blood of Jesus can reverse the curse of sin and raise the dead to life. How clearly we can see it is finished. The single greatest sacrifice in human history encapsulated in this one realization. We can say that God is for us. Now we know better. There is a peace beyond understanding. There is a life of fulfillment. There is a way of redemption. We had almost believed God is dead, but now we are witnesses to this reality. The weak are made strong. The blind can see. The lost are found. We had heard the stories of old. Yes, this is what is true. The chains of mortality utterly broken. Behold, freedom rising. Now God's people are unstoppable. There's no longer the sound of the enemy laughing. His plans obliterated. Here is our King, Jesus, overcoming our sin and our debt, reconciling us with God, erasing the very notion of our rebellion, our guilt, our shame. Heaven watched and saw it all, the naked humiliation, the inhuman flogging, the brutal beating, and this was deemed sufficient for all of us. We told ourselves that we were in control. All along, these were the plans firmly in the hands of God. Our sin drove the nails, our sin stopped his heart, and yet this is the incredible part of it. He never stopped loving us. The bright light of our future all in one moment bringing death to death by way of a cross. This is the story of Jesus, the Son of God, an innocent man putting to an end the wrongdoing of all humanity. How can one describe such a day? Good Friday. Hello, I'm Claire Chance. I'm the senior pastor here at Avondale United Methodist Church, and I'd like to welcome you to our Good Friday service. 
Today is the day that we celebrate Jesus' death. Makes you wonder why they call it good, doesn't it? But the reason we call it good is because this is the day we see Jesus' pure goodness, his self-sacrificial love for humankind. So as we celebrate that day together, get some communion elements, get any kind of bread and any kind of juice or, or wine to celebrate the communion service with me later in this service. Now, let's start with some music.
Telestai. Immediately before breathing his last breath, Jesus loudly cried out one final word on the cross to Telestai. One word with a critical meaning. It is finished. It is completed, brought to an end, accomplished with finality. After Satan had shamed, beaten, mocked, tortured, and crucified the Son of God, as the devil celebrated because he had done his worst, Jesus didn't just whisper out a meager resolution, I'm finished. Exhausted, giving up, surrendering to death and the enemy. Oh no, he declared for all eternity, it is finished. The law was made perfect. Jesus had obeyed his Father's will. It is finished. God's righteous wrath had collided with God's perfect grace and love. Justice had been satisfied. Reconciliation between flawed humanity and a holy God was made possible. It is finished. The Son allowed people to see a glimpse of the Father. He brought light to the nations. It is finished. The messianic prophecies had been fulfilled. The veil was torn. The Old Testament sacrificial system was now obsolete. Jesus Christ became the blameless sacrifice for every sin. Once and for all, the debt was paid in full. Now and for always. It is finished. There is nothing more for you or me to add. Your good works are insufficient to appease a holy God. Turning over a new leaf will get you nothing eternal. Your striving for perfection will never be good enough to improve on what Jesus has already done. It is finished. Your poverty nor your prosperity will earn you reconciliation with God. You cannot give enough, acquire enough, or deprive yourself enough to profit God's favor. And you will never be able to attend enough religious gatherings to add anything to his completed work on the cross. Your performance, your talent, your intellect are all deficient for salvation. It is finished. An extra special word or understanding is not required. You don't need a new revelation from a preacher, a prophet, a teacher, book, blog, friend, or even yourself. It is finished. Anything you try to add to his completed work in order to make it right with God is impotent. Perhaps even insulting. And actually heretical. It is finished. So what does one do when the work of salvation is complete? Believe and repent. Rest. Worship and give thanks. Rejoice and share. Believe that Jesus is Lord and has fully paid the debt of salvation. Repent from your belief in your self-sufficiency and follow Jesus exclusively. It is finished. Rest. Quit striving for God's love, acceptance, and forgiveness. The work is done. Accept it. Rest in it and live every day in the gospel. Worship and give thanks. Give him the glory he is due. Express gratitude for his mercy and grace. It is finished. Rejoice and share. Doesn't everyone need to know about this freedom? Praise Jesus. It is finished. Have you got your communion elements ready? Because now we're going to celebrate that sacred meal. Let us pray together. Holy and loving God, we come to you on this holy day, remembering the truth and the incredible loving nature of Jesus' sacrifice for us. We're so grateful that you showed us the way to live through his life and his teachings, and we are grateful that you offered him for us. 
we open our hearts to you today, Lord, remembering all the times that we've gotten it wrong. And we pray for your forgiveness. We pray for your grace to shower down upon us. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, as we all say, amen. On the night that Jesus would give himself up for us, he gathered his followers for the Seder meal. We talked about that yesterday. And as he looked around that table at people who had given up everything in their lives for him, he knew they would not understand when he died a human death. And so he gave them new ways to think about it in retrospect. I'm sure they didn't understand it that night, but in the week following his death and resurrection, surely they looked back on these holy words and said, oh, that's what he meant. Death is no longer the victor. This is what Jesus said. He took bread. He gave thanks to God for it as I do. And then he broke it, saying, this bread is my body, which is broken for you. Take, eat, Jesus said. Hear the invitation of our loving Lord, inviting you to take him into yourself anew today. Take, eat, Jesus said. At the end of the meal, Jesus found another symbol to help them understand that his death went so far beyond that moment. Jesus took a cup of ordinary table wine. He gave thanks to God for it, as I do. And I ask that God would bless this cup, this bread, your cup, your bread, to be Jesus for us, that we would take him into ourselves and be made new in his grace. For this is what Jesus said. Jesus said, this cup is my blood, which will be spilled for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. So take, drink, do this often and always in remembrance of me. For this cup is the blood of a new covenant between God and humankind for the forgiveness of sin. Take, drink. made new by water and the blood and the spirit. We are called to share God's love with this hurting world. May we be joined together by the Holy Spirit to do that better than we can do it on our own. Thanks be to God, amen.
Ooh.